friends, I'm going to read you a story today that's a favorite story of mine. It's about a little boy named Alexander who's not having a very good day. And that happens to all of us, right? We have some days or maybe it's just the morning or the afternoon or part of our day that's just not going well. And in the story, Alexander thinks that he could just move away to another country and that will make everything better. But it's important to know that the thing that makes our bad feelings feel better is talking about them. We need to talk to a mom or a dad or a teacher when we're at school to help us to um, understand our feelings and learn good ways to handle them. So in this story about Alexander, there are lots of reasons that he could be having a bad day. Maybe he's not feeling well, right? If we're not feeling well, that could make for a tough day. Maybe we're angry about something and that makes a day difficult. Maybe we really wanted to get something or go somewhere and it doesn't happen and then we feel disappointed. That could make a day go rough. Maybe we're worried or scared about something happening and that makes a day difficult. Maybe we didn't sleep so well last night and we're just feeling kind of tired and sluggish and that could make a day rough. Maybe we're just feeling kind of sad and we're not really sure why. Things right now are pretty different, right? We're not going to school. We're home with mom and dad. We can't go play with our friends at the playground. We might even have to wear a mask when we go outside. And that could make us all feel any one of these feelings. But just remember, talk to mom and dad or someone else that you love and trust about those feelings and they'll, they'll go away and things will get better. And Alexander learns that eventually too. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith, Re Judith V. Orst. Pictures by Ray Cruz. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth and now I have gum in my hair. When I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on my skateboard and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running. And I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box. Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was cereal. I think I'm going to move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window too. I said, I'm being scrunched. I said, I'm being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. Nobody even answered me. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I forgot number 16. Who needs 16 anyway? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said, I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and that Albert Moya was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said. I hope the next time that you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds and Paul's mother 
gave him a piece of jelly roll with coconut sprinkles on top. Guess whose mom forgot to pack dessert? It was definitely a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was, because after school, we went to the dentist. Dr. Fields found a cavity, but just in me. Come back in a week, he said, and we'll fix it. Hmm. Next week, I said, I'm going to be in Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy, and then when I started crying because of all the mud, Nick called me a crybaby. While I was punching Nick for saying that I was a crybaby, my mom came back with the car, and she scolded me, scolded me, and she yelled at me or talked harsh to me. She yelled at me for being muddy and for fighting. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, I said. Nobody even answered me. Then we went to the shoe store to buy some new sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. But the shoe man said, sorry, we're all sold out. They made me buy some plain white ones. They made me buy them, but they can't make me wear them, I said. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copying machine, mm, but I kind of forgot. And he also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was careful except for my elbow. And he also said don't fool around with the phone, but I think I might have called Australia. My dad said, please don't pick me up at work anymore. It was a terrible horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner. Ugh, I hate lima beans. And there was kissing on TV. Ugh, I hate kissing. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes and my favorite marble went down the drain and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow that he said I could keep and our Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony and not with me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And my mom says, some days are just like that, even in Australia. Look, Alexander's sleeping now, and I think that he's going to get a good night's sleep and have a much better day tomorrow. So I hope that all of you are having a good day, and if it's not going so well so far, I hope the rest of the day is better. And I hope to see you all again soon.